So what we have here today is pretty much the simplest setup you can have to get a stepper motor to spin. Um, we will see here that there is no electronics in here. We have a couple of uh, passive components over here and that's to get rid of some of the uh, uh, inductive kickback when the switch is open. Uh, because again, there's coils of wire inside of here. Um, just like on a relay, you need some sort of mitigation to keep that um, collapsing magnetic field from causing some troubles for you. Um, so that's what these are for. Um, we can see here the um, inductor here is a ferrite inductor. Uh, I think this came out of a um, switching power supply. We're going to be feeding it with 13 and a half volts. We can see that here positive. The capacitor in here, the 0.01 microfarad ceramic is also for uh, partial mitigation of some of the uh, inductive spikes that are going to come back out of this guy when you open these switches. Because you've built up a magnetic field across these. When that magnetic field collapses, it's got to go somewhere. It collapses and uh, generates a, a fair spike. And we'll show that on the oscilloscope later on. Uh, I'll, I'll tap it on this side and I'll put the other probe on this side and we'll uh, see just how much junk comes out of this when you open these switches. Now this um, stepper motor here is a six wire stepper motor. So the two center tapped coils here have gone to ground. So we're using positive voltage. We have four switches. These four switches are not in this particular order. I've set these up so that we, uh, when we operate this thing, we're going to uh, energize coil 1A and then 2A and then 1B and 2B. You have to play with this a little bit to figure out which way, um, which way these coils go. And when you start hitting the buttons, the motor starts to spin. So we go 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B, etc. And we get 48 steps. That's what this uh, motor was designed with, is 48 steps. I'm not going to do this 48 times, but you get the idea. So uh, as fast as I can push it, that little motor is going to step forward and uh, give us a rotating action. And of course, if I go in the opposite direction, I go the buttons the other way. In, in order, we get rotation in the opposite direction. If I was to go back and forth between just the two end ones, we never we can get bumps back in the wrong direction. And this is on an unloaded motor. If we had a load on this, the load might be pushing it in a particular direction. So we want to be sure that we do our order correctly. And I will show you on another little drawing here of what's happening with this motor. This is a representative drawing. Uh, we're energizing 1A and you can see this is a very obviously a very crude drawing on 1A we get the teeth that line up in here magnetically these are very close together and these teeth line up with the rotor teeth here's the shaft coming out we're looking down on the on the motor you'll notice that 1B is uh, half a tooth off and uh, over here we have 2A and 2B 2B compared to 2A is also half a tooth off but this whole assembly here is shifted a quarter of a tooth. And that gives us, uh, this guy is in a line, this is off by a quarter tooth, half a tooth, three quarters of a tooth, and of course this one's in line. So I've uh, filled in some of the wiring on the schematic here, or representative diagram, let's call it, uh, to show what our situation is with this particular stepper motor. Uh, we have four connections, 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and the two grounds. That's these six wires right here, which are represented represented here. And um, you'll often find, again, a five wire. One of these is what they've done, is they've simply taken this wire here and this wire here, and they've brought these guys together. And this, in our case, would be ground, which is equivalent to what we have here anyways, because these these two positions are both hooked up to ground here and our positive 13 and a half volt is applied to each of these uh, positions here with our switches. So now we're going to take a look at the inductive kickback that happens when you uh, de-energize a coil by letting one of these buttons go after it's been energized. So we have on the scope uh, channel 1 is the yellow trace which is taken from this point here. And we have channel 2, the blue trace, which is taken from the other side of this uh, toroid. 
and that's right there. So let's go push a button. That doesn't make any difference which button it is because all the all the coils are the same and all the buttons are the same. So let's uh, just push this one here and I'll energize it. And we see that we haven't triggered yet. When I do let it go, there we are. So we are triggering on the yellow trace. So you can see here that uh, this is zero volts right down here. And we are triggering at 20 volts right here. Uh, it says also up here 20 volts. That's what our trigger is. So that's why the yellow one has uh, kicked us off here. Um, you can see that it goes, so oh, say 35 volts or so plus positive. And you'll also notice that some of the uh, ringing goes down below zero here as well. Now, if I take the yellow trace off of here and show us just the blue trace, which is on the other side of that uh, inductor, that toroid inductor, it's uh, taken a lot of that garbage out of there. Um, probably won't blow up your power supply or anything else that you might have. But uh, that just gives you an idea, even from those small coils that are inside of uh, this, relatively small coils, that are inside of this stepper motor. It's something that you have to keep in mind. You have to bear that in mind. It's the same with like relays. If you're using a relay or something, you want to mitigate that uh, inductive kickback.